what's going on everybody welcome back to prescribed truth i'm jamal bandy the one who seeks to distribute the truth that the doctor prescribes to the church and the world today let's get to it it's been a long time coming i'm ready let's go let's do a video review let's get to it we are deserving but christ changed our mind frame in a world full of errors the only thing the doctor prescribes is truth that don't want god for real And I'm going to say this right here, no pun intended just for you guys, but I will have to say I can't come in a place and not be a prophet of God. But that's what's happening to the body of Christ with the music. We have people, musicians that leave and don't want the word. But I'm going to tell you something, the word with your gift that God gave you is for him and his people. And so what is happening in the body, I know some of y'all looking at me crazy. But All right, so off the top, I just want to address some stuff. What she said in the beginning was, this is just, it's this generation of people who just don't want God. And so she's saying that, basically saying that these these musicians don't want God because they just up and leave at the, you know, they leave, you know, after they finish playing, whatever, they just want to up and go. And so there's a lot of assumptions being made. And you could say, well, she's just talking about a generation in general, but she wouldn't have said that had it been for these musicians who wants to get up. So her assumption is they just want to do their own thing. They don't even want to hear the word. And I will say this to be fair, there are a lot of musicians out there in a lot of these kind of charismatic churches who aren't saved. They're not like they're vetted for being a Christian before they're able to play. They are paid to play. And a lot of these guys are secular musicians. They are paid to come and play. And so that's usually how it is. A lot of times that's what's going on. So I understand the sentiment behind it, but you know, and then she said that she can't go into a place and not be a prophet in the place, you know, <sighs> anyway. I got a whole spiel for that. So I'm, I'm trying not to, uh, oh, you know, just put too much on you guys as far as the commentary so far. So anyway, you guys kind of know, should know where I stand when it comes to stuff like this already. So I'll try not to, uh, you know, keep beating a dead horse, but I feel like it will be addressed more and more as we go. I'm going to tell you something. That's just how I work. I'm telling you, I don't come and shoot or nothing because I would do it even in my church if I had to. But somebody uh, we see it all over I travel all over the world uh, as soon as the preacher start preaching we get up and leave and then we go get something to eat and drink uh, but the devil is a liar I will decree and declare that the lead that not no. I will decree and declare that the musicians will get saved all over again I decree and declare that they will have a heart to see okay so it's our buffer a little bit here, but she's basically saying, I decree and declare that the musicians will get saved all over again. So there are some things wrong with this theology already. I decree and declare. One, you don't decree and declare a thing. We as humans, even if you claim to be a prophet or a prophet is, do not decree and declare nothing. It's only God who decrees and declares. All right, and God speaks through prophets, but you never hear the prophet say, I decree and declare, this is this and that third. No, 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 they, they say, thus says the Lord. All right, thus says the Lord, blah, blah, blah. All right, that's how it is. You talking about something, I decree and declare, you're claiming to be in the place of God, because guess what? If God, if it's not God's will for said musicians to be saved, then you decree and declare, don't change a thing. They won't be saved. But if it is God's will for them to be saved, then whether or not you decree or declare anything, they will be saved. Because it's what God decides. It's what the God what God decrees and declares, not you. You don't have the power over salvation. You can pray for someone's salvation. Yes, please pray for people to be saved, right? We can pray. Pray God will save. Just pray. You ain't got to do all the extra stuff, decree and declaring. Just pray that just pray that people will get saved, that people will be saved for real. But then the next thing is that they'll be saved all over again, as if they lost the salvation, now they got to get it back. That's faulty theology already. Because the Bible declares, that God declares, that if we are free, we are free indeed. If we're set free in Christ, there's no need to be reborn again. We're only born again once. That's what I love about the scriptures. The Bible never says that we're born again more than once. If we're born again, we are born again, and that's it. We're in Christ. And the Holy Spirit then 
testifies of, of sin, testifies of Christ, and convicts the heart of sin. That's what it is. He testifies of Christ and convicts us of sin. All right? That's, a, that's the role of the Spirit. Sanctification, a lifelong process for the rest of our lives. But we only are born again once. And when we're born again, we are saved. Saved from what? Saved from the wrath of God. Saved from the wrath of God due to our sin. Because it, our sin debt was paid for on the cross. So, you know, the language like this. How good they be? How, I decree it. They be saved all over again. God ain't hearing that prayer. It ain't even God. You're not a prophet. Should not be a pastor. And what you said you're doing in your church. This type of, and look at the behavior. This, the, the, the main reasons that's given is like this, you know, aggressive, assertive, and all these things. It's like, no, that's, that's not for you. It's not for you. That's for, that's for the man to lead. I mean, that's what God decreed it to be. That's what, that's what God declared and decreed through his word. Anyway, let's continue. gets me like a lot of times people like her in these circles they'll use this point to vent out all their frustrations about what's going on in these circles because that that could be the case there are some musicians who don't get checked who quote unquote don't get checked don't get rebuked you know are not held accountable all those things right this goes on a lot of the churches not just the musicians the members too the pastors too you know no one is held accountable as they should be that's what's wrong that's what's gravely wrong in a lot of these churches. And that's why a lot of these churches are gravely not Christian. See? Um, but she's using this time in order to just deal with what's going on with these particular musicians. She uses this moment to just vent out all of her frustrations, which really is not needed here. It's not the place for that. You know, it's not the case with these particular people. You're assuming on people's hearts. You know, and then you're assuming now this pastor, whoever's the leader of this particular church, um, I saw it in the comments, the pastor wasn't there who leads this church. So as if saying as if, hey, I'm checking them. And, you know, but there are people who don't want to check them. Like they should be checked for stuff like this. And I'm, I'm going to check them. You see what I'm saying? Like that kind of attitude, combative and everything else, you know, just should not be. That like, what is the goal? So you want them to play and stay playing. Okay. Okay. But all the other stuff is like, what do they got to do with their salvation? What does playing music has to do with their salvation? And you're saying that, you know, that they have these battles. Musicians, you know, musicians face spiritual battles and warfare and all of that. They're not facing battles and warfare and spiritual warfare because of their playing ability. We're all sinners in need of a savior. They put things in their proper context and then maybe things will work out better when it comes to stuff like this. I grew up, I found out that they was the biggest liar. They was the biggest protector. 
hinder. And I understand now that's why they were so adamant about it because they didn't want people to see who they were. So look at your neck and say, I'm about to process because I'm about to go up. I'm going up. Can you play something? You okay? So now, after she say all that, now it's like, okay, hey, got it off my chest. I gave the rebuke. Now, can you play something? Are you okay? <laughs> and this girl, hey, she's being sweet. She's letting her know it wasn't what you thought, basically. And she wasn't going there. She's just like, I really had something going on. That's that's what it was. But if she doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. She wants you to play now. You know, it's like, are you okay? I got onto you. I whooped your butt. Are you okay now? Are you okay? Played something for me. You know, I, I, I can't stand this kind of behavior, man. I, I used to be in it, but it just brings back memories. That kind of behavior is like, yeah, I cut you deep. I play. <laughs> and, you know, and so she plays. She plays. And so here we go. We're getting to the point now. Okay. Oh, yeah. Can you play something? Can you play? Bro, bro looked in the eyes and like, mm mm. So I'm gonna sit here. Like, mm mm. He could have gotten up and walked away. He could, you know, but he sat there. He just was like, no, nah, I'm just gonna sit here. And that made her upset because he wouldn't play. But you just came down on them. You know, see, this, this kind of behavior begets more behavior like that. You know, and yeah, he could have just played and just swallowed it, you know, swallowed it and like, I'm gonna play. But what she did was, you know, embarrassed them, called them out in front of everybody and everything else when usually they're okay to go. And you'll say, well, she's supposed to, he's supposed to obey the prophetess. Who says? Who says Who says she's a prophetess who has that kind of authority? And he couldn't take a break if his previous pastor allowed him to. Now, the comments here, I mean, this is the post made, uh, I guess it's supposed to be the, the musician's son. And he says, for the record, my son was not hired by this woman and or her ministry as well. He as well as the other musician were allowed after they play for the praise and worship to go and take a break by the pastor who they originally play for. And then he puts in parentheses, the pastor was not there. This is out of order. And to send a word curse, absolutely not. As a real prophet, which no, sir, no, sir. And a father, I stand against injustice and manipulation. No hashtag, no more pulpit abuse. All right, so pastor wasn't there. They get some context, okay? So yeah. So anyway, she. So you see, he just stand, He's just sitting there. He's not leaving. Um, from what I can hear, he didn't. You know, I can't. I can't hear anything. I don't have a mic there for me to hear if he said anything to her. But it doesn't like he did. It's like he just sat there. You know, it doesn't like he said anything to her. The, the uh, young, the young woman on the keys. She's looking back like, oh, you really ain't gonna play. You really gonna do this? Okay, but I'm gonna keep playing. <laughs> So she keeps playing, and this is what goes on. I'm gonna tell you something. So he don't gonna play. Aiden, can you go play, please? I don't even think you understand what you just did, young man. And so she got somebody else to come and play and take his spot. Good thing. No, all she had to do was just do that. He didn't want to play. The rest of the stuff, unnecessary. Everything after this point is unnecessary. He didn't want to play. It's not a sin for him not to play. It's not a sin for him to say, no, nah, I'm good. No, nah, I don't want to play. Not a sin. Fine. Somebody else will play. It, now, that's, and that, and that's what she did. Switch him out. And that should have been the end of it. And moved on. And who was in your presence? Wow, wow, that's crazy. But I and get me, man. She's so. I know I'm, you know, I'm stopping and starting and stuff. I know, but what she just said, you don't know, young man. Who was who in your presence? And then the person behind the camera saying, "Wow, wow, my God, wow." I can't stand this behavior, man. 
So you you did this to me. I mean, you don't even know who was in your presence. You have no idea the kind of person you said no to. You you don't even know. Had it been anybody else, yeah, you could have. It'd been fine if you did it to anybody else. But you did it to me. I'm the one you don't even recognize. I can't stand that, man. There's so much pride in that, man. And she's not, and it's not just her. I've seen this in other pastors who are like this, male pastors, not even women pastors. Like, you know, male pastors call themselves prophets and apostles. They do this kind of stuff. And it's intimidation. It's manipulation. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's like, like trying to instill fear into him because he doesn't want to play a freaking instrument. That makes me upset. I can't stand that. Now, she did apologize for her trying to call out this prophetess woman. But that, I didn't see anything on YouTube or anything like that for her, so apologizing for this behavior. I will give you 48 hours to repent. My God. 48. My God. My God. I hate that even more so. I mean, I'm going to rewind that back so, you just, so we just see the context. Which is, I'm going to let this play, but I'm going to rewind this back. Because I've heard stuff like this before. I've been under stuff like this before, and I can't stand it. It makes me heated. Who was in your presence? What you just did, young man. And who was in your presence? Wow. Wow. That's crazy. But I will give you 48 hours to repent. My God. 48. My God. My God. 48. And just walk off like that. So she says it and threatens him. Threatens him with her office of being so-called a prophetess. Threatens him. I'm going to give you 48 hours to repent. You got 48 hours. And walks off like she did something. Oh, man, you ain't got no power. And it's been months. And you don't understand what repentance is. Turning from sin. Repent of what? That he didn't want to play? Repent of what? That he was offended by you embarrassing him? When you should have been the one repenting. No, no, that's, that's wrong. And stuff like this, it's not just here, not just in this church. And I want to say this. I would know nothing about this woman. I would know nothing about her church, nothing about her husband, um, Fred Gooden, uh, Apostle Fred Gooden. Like, I wouldn't know nothing about any of them had it been for her showing her behind on the Internet. Wouldn't know nothing about them. But this stuff like this needs to be put out. This stuff like that needs to be shown. This is abuse. This is manipulation. Using the spirit of God for manipulation. When, you, when we go out and share the gospel with somebody and we call people to repent, because yes, you do want to call people to repent. But not because they hurt your feelings because they couldn't play for you. That ain't what, that ain't what God called people to repent for. That people out here really committing sins really need to repent and trust in Jesus for sure. He need, he need to repent and trust in Jesus for playing for you? Come on, man. No. No. That makes me upset, man. It makes me upset. Anyway, and then to walk off like that and all that pride and arrogance. The arrogance she has. To use that office like that. Her emotions get in the way. It has nothing to do with the Spirit of God. It has nothing to do with declaring, thus says the Lord. It's her emotions getting in the way and she's using her quote-unquote office to abuse said power that she claims to have that her people allow her to believe because they ain't they ain't studying the bible they're not studying the new testament they're not studying it no i'm glad that she's getting making that she's you know making headlines that people are seeing this i'm glad it's being exposed i heard that she ended up getting counseled from some type of conference she was supposed to be a part of but it's not just her, not just her. This is the type of culture that exists in a lot of charismatic churches that are black, predominantly black. Especially those who claim to have prophets and apostles and everything else. This exists. And I'm gonna get more into some more thoughts when we get to the next video. Uh, but let's, let's continue from here. We only got a, a few seconds left here. Please let me get his name before I leave. I hope y'all aren't recording this. This makes what 
I've been speaking true. I have And it stops. And so they don't want to see no wrestling. Okay. So it stops after that. You know, she says it makes what she's been speaking truth. Don't know what that was about and all that stuff. But let me let me go back to this other screen real quick so I can speak my thoughts real fast. So this kind of behavior bothers me, as you can see. I'm upset about it. Don't like it. Can't stand it. Can't stand it. You know, to take a position and abuse it to manipulate others to do what you want them to do is the reason why you ought not to be in leadership. Now, let alone the fact that as a woman, you ought not be a pastor and you ought not be claiming that you are sitting here leading and having authority over men. No. So that being said, you're showing the reason why you as an individual ought not to be in leadership in any capacity. Threatening somebody using the spirit of God. Like if I'm, if I'm preaching the gospel to somebody, if I'm sharing the gospel with an individual and I want them to repent, I do want them to repent, but not to please me, not to do what I want them to do. And not because I'm somebody special, but because of who God is. And when I call someone to repent, I'm not threatening them with repentance. They are free to do whatever they want to do. I don't know if it's going to be 48 hours. I don't know if they have one hour. I don't know if they have 10 years. I don't know. But what I do know is that they die in their sins, not trusting in Christ, then the result is hell. That's, I mean, that's just the end. I'm not, I'm not trying to threaten them with anything. Like, I'm telling you now, you got 48 hours to repent of your sins. Or, or, hey, that's it. I, I have no clue. And then to say you got 48 hours to repent with nothing, with nothing out, no consequence, no what's what's it what's gonna happen in 48 hours, ma'am? What's gonna happen in 48 hours? I can't stand stuff like that. See, the real prophets of God that had real power, who God used for real, they didn't just tell them, hey, if you don't repent, I'm telling you, huh? Don't repent, see what happened. Hmm. Don't turn from your sin and see what happened. <laughs> Keep on. Keep on. No. Oh. They didn't do that. So, like, even... <laughs> anyway. Anyway. I'm not going to rant on that. Because I can go all day on that. See? We just only went through the first video, and it's almost 30 minutes. Guys, I'm going to stop right here at this point. I'm, I'm not stopping for real. Let's keep this going. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was helpful for you. If you'd like to catch the full version of this video, raw and unedited, please consider joining us over at Patreon at patreon.com forward slash prescribe truth. For $5 or more, you have access to this full content and more. Or you can support the ministry just for my dollar and up. We greatly appreciate it. Start checking out some of the other videos we have on the channel and see if you find those also encouraging. And if you have any pushback or anything like that, please consider commenting and reach out to me at prescribe.truth at gmail.com. Remember, this world is full of errors and the only thing the doctor prescribes is truth. Blessings.